So here's something that might shock you, all right? If you were to ask men if there's a lot of good women out there, they would tell you no. Now listen, <laughs> before you react to that, because I know some of y'all might be like, well, there ain't no good men. No, listen, there are plenty of good men and good women. I, I do believe, unfortunately, we're having a problem with good men and good women finding each other, right? Or seeing each other for who they are. But I do think it's important that we discuss the reality that a lot of men feel like there might be potentially good women. And I'm saying how these men are viewing it. But a lot of women aren't tapping into the things that would really set them apart, that would really make them shine in a way that the average woman does not, all right? And I know for a lot of women that can be shocking or you, you might be sucking your teeth or whatever because you look at your friends and maybe even your family, you're like, I know so many good women. Now, let me just give you a secret. Some of those women you swear are so good, you don't know how they act when they're in a relationship. You may not be fully aware of the things that they do when they're dealing with men. There are a lot of women who may be very positive and loving around their girlfriends, but when, when dealing with a man that they're emotionally invested in, it can start to trigger and bring out deeper issues that typically don't go noticed by others, all right? But we're not here to talk about the bad side. We're here to talk about what are those things that can set a woman apart, that can really make her or allow her to be viewed as the good woman that I believe she is. I believe that you are, that maybe not every man is seeing, right? So one of those things that set, will set you apart from every other woman is having emotional intelligence. Now, I know a lot of women, let me start with this. You know how they say women mature faster than men, okay? And I disagree. <laughs> now listen, I disagree simply because I think it depends on how we're looking at it. Women mature faster than men in regards to women are much more ready to settle down as far as having a family, you know, putting the things of the high school days and college days behind them. If you didn't go to those, if you didn't go to college, whatever, those years behind you and now looking towards more adulthood, so to speak, right? Whereas men may be viewed as they linger longer in that mindset, so to speak. And, and they're in these streets longer, so to speak. However, if we're talking about maturing emotionally and having emotional intelligence, I would make the argument that both sides struggle big time, all right? And a lot of people, and yes, I'm acknowledging tons of men lack emotional intelligence, but unfortunately, a lot of women, whether they realize it or not, struggle in that area as well. And, you know, emotional intelligence is being able to be aware of your emotions, have a level of control, not letting them get the best of you, right? And understanding how to properly express yourself. And unfortunately, so many, whether it's in one of those areas or multiple areas, are, are not coming correct as they should. Maybe I don't like the word coming correct right now. Are, haven't developed in the way that they need to to have greater success in their relationships, okay? So what a lot of men deal with, so one of the things I mentioned is how when I said to you, you don't know how your female friend or your family is behaving in a relationship when you think to yourself, well, there's good women all around me. One of the things that I've seen, so many, like I'm going to give you a quick story. So I remember one time, this may sound bad, but you know, I'm just going to be real with y'all. Uh, I, without giving too much detail, uh, I was at this party many years ago and there was this woman who was like a family friend yeah, and very attractive woman. I mean, she was pretty, nice body, everything, right? This woman had an amazing job, intelligent, success, like you name it. As far as her resume on the surface, she got it. And I'm like, what's what's going like? How, 
this, I know she wants a relationship. I know she wants marriage. Hasn't had success in that area. What is going on? I was like, Something's, something must be going on. And I remember one day, see her get into it with somebody. And listen, we all have a moment. We, we, we all may lose ourselves sometimes. You know, that doesn't mean something's wrong with you. But what I saw in that situation, I was like, that's it. What I saw was someone who had no control of their emotions. What I saw was someone who had no awareness, okay, and no understanding of how to properly express themselves. Now, can I say 100% that that is a common thing? But you understand, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a coach. I'm very intuitive. I know how to look deeper and understand when this is just more than a moment, right? And this is part of the character that hasn't developed in this individual. And I was like, that's it. That's what's throwing things off for this woman who I believe if she can correct that, it'd be a game changer for her, okay? And so for a lot of women, learn that. if you watch my videos, I'm always talking about expressing yourself in a loving, calm manner. Being mindful of the energy, the spirit that you give off when you speak to people. Being mindful, again, of not letting your emotions get the best of you. And, and, and for some of you who are willing to be honest with yourself about these struggles, one, I applaud you and I encourage you. I don't want you to beat yourself up or, or feel down or feel like, man, that's why I, I lost a, a situation before messed up. And, and I'm going to be real with you. Like As a coach, I've seen plenty of women... When they gave me the real story of what happened with them and a previous guy, yeah, the, the way they reacted and handled things did contribute heavily to why things did not work out. And unfortunately, a lot of times a woman, whether it be you, your friend, whoever, when they tell the story to other friends and family, they tend to leave out little bits and pieces that might expose where they contributed or created the problem, all right? And if you're questioning that, and hopefully you're still with me in this video and not in any way bothered by this, um, if you've ever got into it with a woman, another woman, and you had a mutual friend, and you talked to a mutual friend, you asked them, well, what's the story she gave you? Many of you would acknowledge when you hear the story, it, it's not the whole story. And it paints her as the more innocent while it's you or the, the bad one, right? So if, she, if, if you've had experience with women who've done that to you, what do you think they're doing when they're dealing with men? All right? They're not always giving the full story. But a lot of it boils down to a lack of emotional intelligence. And so developing that as a woman goes a long way with men because, again, believe it or not, so many men have dealt with women who, who outburst and talk to them all kinds of ways and all these different things. And it's just like, that's not going to make a man view you or it's going to cause a man to just view you as just like the rest rather than understand, no, this woman is different because she has learned how to master this area of her life. All right. So piggybacking off that first point of emotional intelligence, another trait that sets you apart from other women is being very clear, specific, and transparent, okay? So many of you may not realize, or maybe you do, that a lot of women can be very vague when they speak to men about certain things, about how they feel, about what they want, about what they expect. And one of the reasons why is because a lot of women feel like, why should I have to tell you exactly what it is? You should be willing to explore or figure it out, right? Or some may have the fear of, well, I don't want to give him the exact blueprint to what makes me happy in fear of he will then just use that to manipulate and use me rather than he'll actually use it for good. And there could be other reasons, but and some just haven't learned how to communicate in a clear, transparent manner. But the bottom line is that vagueness can become very frustrating for a man. And more specifically, for a man who actually is trying to love you and pour into you. 
I've had so many situations where a man, he could be married or a boyfriend, and his him and his girl are going through some issues, and he'll say, like, if she just told me what she wanted and needed, I'd do it. But she's not, she doesn't ever tell me what it is. She just, she's never clear with me. So this is why I always speak about the example of like, if you say to a man, I, I want more of your time. And let's paint the picture. You say to a man, I want more of your time. Let's say you're only seeing him once a week for whatever the reasons are. And he hears you say, I want more of your time. So he thinks, okay, I'm going to bump it up to two days a week, right? And then to you, you're still frustrated because what you really wanted was maybe four days or maybe every day, whatever it is, right? But all you said to him was, I need to see you more. So to him, picture the situation, he's giving you two days. To him, it's, man, I'm doing my thing. I'm showing this woman I'm serious. To you, you're frustrated. And your frustration, especially if at that point, because here's what happens a lot of times, you don't want to have to say it again. Because now it's like, I already told him once, and all he did was give me an extra day. I'm not saying it again. So now you're frustrated, but you're still dealing with him. He feels like I'm trying harder, but still getting this attitude from you or this frustration from you. And, and he doesn't understand what this is about. That creates you know negativity within him, and the whole thing just becomes a huge mess. And all of that could be solved by being more clear and transparent. What men don't want to have to deal with is playing a guessing game with their woman. Because when you guess wrong, you still pay a price. You, men don't get extra points for guessing even if it's wrong. It's like, okay, well, at least you tried so you're good. Nah, like he's, it's still going to be a problem in many situations. So it's like, why are we setting him up for failure? Because he may not get it right. And he needs you, you to clearly express what that is. As well as, let's not even make it about needing something. Sometimes you may come home, right? And let's say you live with the man and you're in a bad mood. And let's say it's because of something that he did or didn't do earlier that day. And he asks you, hey, what's wrong? No, I'm good. I'm fine. And he goes about his business. <laughs> okay? And now, again, this is, this is not every woman, but some women end up being frustrated and upset because either he's not pushing harder to find out what's wrong, or he's just not aware enough to understand something is wrong, even if you said... But all of that leads to you are making things more difficult with him rather than just letting him know, yeah, I am feeling some kind of way. Yeah, I am, excuse me, I am unhappy right now. And understand that by being clear and transparent, you know, when, when we say uh, a man wants peace, be a man's peace, you know, simply being clear, transparent, specific brings peace. Because clarity, a lack of clarity can, can create chaos, all right? And so when we remove that lack of clarity and, and we're more upfront with each other, it's a much more peaceful environment. There's no guessing game. There's none of that nonsense. We know how each other feels. We're on the same page. And of course, some of you may say, well, I've been open and transparent with a man and he still didn't do what he's supposed to do. If you have done your part and he's not doing his, then he's exposing himself as a man that you shouldn't be with. But don't stop being transparent and open because again, the man who has genuine intentions is going to love that about you and it will definitely set you apart from the average woman. All right, so let's keep this going. Now this next one, some of y'all need to take a deep breath <laughs> and after I say it, let me break it down and explain it. Don't, don't jump to any defensive stance on this. So the next thing that sets you apart from all the other women is loving catering to your man, okay? <laughs> what was that song? Was it Cater to Your Man? I forgot what song it was. Destiny's Child, somebody. I don't know. Either way, it's real. It's real. It's powerful. It sets you apart. Now, I know some of y'all are like, well, I'm not catering to some man who ain't catering to me or who ain't doing what he needs to do for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
I'm in no way saying just be pouring into and catering to some deadbeat man or some no good dude or whatever the case may be. I'm not saying that. But you have to have even start with even having that desire and willingness and that energy about you, okay? Because let's face it, some of y'all just the, just the thought of the idea of cater to your man. That that phrase alone makes some of y'all itch. <laughs> like some of y'all do not like that whole premise, okay? And and you have to ask yourself why? Why? What what is the issue there? We should we not want to cater to our loved ones? Should we not want to pour into them? Should we not want to make sure they're good, right? And for those of you who might say on the flip side, well, I'm completely prepared to do that if this man does this or shows me that or, you know, whatever the case may be. Though that's understandable, the problem is for some of you, what you're going to find yourself doing is holding back who you are, right? And holding back the true fullness of you because you're, you, what you really have is a wall up. All right. And for some of you, some, not all, that wall is so high that there's nothing that man, because because we're human beings and people are naturally going to have moments where they make a mistake or they do something wrong, whatever, even good, well-intentioned people, that person whose wall is too high, whose, whose trauma is too deep, can always find a reason not to be vulnerable in that way not to open up and truly cater to that man. Or maybe for some of you, you actually are completely on board with this, but you're surrounded by friends and family who's like, oh, girl, you're doing too much, and boom, 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 and, and who will talk trash if you try to be that woman that caters to a man. Now, one, let me make something clear. I'm not talking about catering to some guy you're in a situationship with, okay? And... Preferably, we, we, we want this to be in marriage, but we, we also understand that boyfriend-girlfriend relationships in today's world are kind of these pseudo-marriages, so to speak. And if that man's doing for you in, in that relationship, I can't say, well, then don't do for him either. Like, that just doesn't make any sense. But in the dating process, it's not that you have to be all doing too much. And I know some of you may be confused as like, well, what's too much? What's actually okay? I get that. And, and I'll say this. If you're being poured back into, then there's a lot more leeway as far as what can be done here. But I do think that it's not necessarily about doing it. It's about having the actual spirit, the heart of a woman who embraces it. Okay? So it's don't think about, oh, I, the actions I have to actually take to cater to him and show him that. It's more so about having that mindset, embracing it, being comfortable with it, right? Feeling good about that part of you. Because I've seen, there are women who who are nurturers, lovers, love to cater to a man, and they love that about themselves. Like, they're in no, they're in no conflict with it. And because of that, it, even before they do certain things, you feel that energy, that spirit from them, Okay. Whereas there are a lot of you who are at conflict with it from within for various reasons. And because you are at conflict, it doesn't come off the same for you. It doesn't show up the same for you. That light doesn't shine the same. And now that is, that is the average woman, I would argue. All right. Or that is the experience that men are, that's what on average men are experiencing with women. They're not experiencing a woman who truly has the heart of, I love doing this for my man, catering to him, all these different things. They're experiencing a woman who's, you know, again, at conflict with it in a lot of ways. And so, bottom line is, yes, it's a powerful thing. Of course, we want it done in a healthy, loving relationship with the right man, but you want to start at the foundation of, you being able to fully embrace it within yourself. All right, so before we get to the next couple uh, ones on this list, real quick, I want to give you an opportunity to join my special membership program. This is a program that's going to help you tap into your feminine energy, hear God more clearly, meet relationship-minded men, heal from your past, if I didn't say that already. Either way, 
Thousands of women have joined, are getting amazing results from it. I want that to happen for you. So take advantage, go to receivingmyblessings.com or click the link in the description or in the comment section and join today. All right. So now the next thing on this list of traits that will set you apart from all the other women is wanting to look good for your man. All right. So this is another one of those topics that can be sensitive for some individuals because we live in a world now that has made it all about, it's about you, 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 and what you want to do and what makes you feel good. And don't get me wrong. I don't disagree, so to speak, with that as the foundation of it. Like we, we have to make sure we feel good. We're pouring into ourselves. How We have to be mindful of how things make us feel. Absolutely. But I am a firm believer that if we want to be in a relationship, we have to have the mindset of, I want to look good for my partner. And let me be clear. I believe this is true for both the man and the woman. I know me. I know if I get in a relationship, I want any time my woman looks at me to be like, damn, he looks good. <laughs> okay. And, and whatever that is for her, as long as whatever that is doesn't cross a line that makes me uncomfortable or puts me in an unhealthy position or things like that, then why not? Why not strive for it? Why not push for it? Why not hold myself to that standard? And so I flip it back to the woman. Why not? Why not want to look good for your man? And, and again, believe it or not, the reason why this sets you apart from so many of the women is because you have a lot of women today who, again, they they... They, some women are more concerned about society and their friends and how they think they look versus their own men. All right. And they're not putting or giving the same energy to their partner in that regard that they give to others. All right. They're not putting the same effort for him that they give to others. Now, understand something. When you, one, men are already very visual. A lot of men, right? So that tends to be something that's important to a lot of guys. Some, it may be less important, but I think there's at least some level of importance with most men when it comes to the visual of their partner. But when you have a partner who does not care to look good for you, to a lot of men, that men, that feels like a partner who does not care about you. A partner that does not care about how you feel. A partner that does not care about their impact on you. So it goes so much deeper than just how you're physically showing up for me as your partner. Okay? And again, it speaks to that deeper mindset and character of the woman. And, 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 and also, I would argue, love. Because in, in all honesty... There are a lot of women that the reason they don't care about looking good for their man is because they're not truly in love with their man. That's just the reality of it. And, and hell, not even just not in love with their man. They just they've never really been that into him. They may have chosen him for other reasons. They, he may have been good enough to be with. They may not even be that strongly attracted to him, but they found it beneficial to be in a relationship with him. I know this sounds all horrible, but it's a reality for many people, or for at least for some people. And so when that man feels like he's not loved or cared about, it's actually true. To a certain extent, it's actually true. Um, but you don't want for the woman who actually does want to show the man that he, she cares and loves him, you don't want to overlook that or dismiss that and say, oh, that shouldn't be a big deal. That shouldn't be a thing. One thing we have to stop doing, men and women, is dismissing the desires and needs of the opposite sex. Just because it's not important to you or not at the same level of importance for you that doesn't mean it should not be important to the other person. Imagine if you're a woman who values deep conversations. And this man who does not care for conversations is like, oh, why do you care? That shouldn't matter. It's not a big deal. You should love me regardless. I do other things for you. Does that make you feel any better? No. No. If anything, that might make you more mad, right? Because it's like, oh, so you're just going to just dismiss how this makes me feel just because you do other nice things? I mean, granted, yeah, I'm happy you do the other things, but this is still important to me. 
So ultimately, um, because there are so many women who have gone away from that mindset of want to look good for their man, the woman who has it immediately starts to set herself apart. And it, and again, it makes the man feel more loved. It makes the man feel more desired when you want to actually look good for him and you take his opinion and perception of things into account, right? Rather than just doing whatever you want and who cares how he feels about it. That, that's just not a good situation to be in. All right. So now last but not least, but I got a little message after this. Okay. Last but not least, the other, another trait that will set you apart from all the other women is being fair and taking personal accountability. Now, if you are on the internet and you pay attention, one of the biggest complaints that men have about women and, the, and what they believe applies to the majority of women is a lack of accountability. And that women are constantly deflecting, constantly trying to flip the tables back on the men rather than accepting where they may fall short, where they may be wrong, where they could be better, so on and so forth. And again, men aren't just saying this because they see it on the internet. A lot of men are saying this because that's what they're experiencing in their relationships. And so again, it kind of goes back to what I said earlier, how you may see what you believe are a bunch of great women around you, but what these men are experiencing can be very different. All right. And I've talked about before how like how frustrating it can be for a woman to be with a man who doesn't take accountability. But guess what? It's the same thing on the flip side. Because now it's the the burden's always on this man. And, and it creates these situations where you'll have this man who, or some men, who just basically take take the brunt of the blame or take the blame all the time to just attempt to smooth things over, attempt to move things forward. And then what happens is the issue doesn't get corrected. Future issues don't get discussed because he starts to feel like, what's the point of telling her there's a problem with this? She ain't going to do anything about it. She's not going to correct it. She's going to turn it back on me. I'm not even going to bother. Now, some of you are going to say, well, then if that's the case, why is he still with the woman? And I agree. Unfortunately, and this happens on both sides, but unfortunately with the men, these it, because they see these types of issues as this is a woman thing, right? They see it as, well, okay, why am I going to leave this woman for her lack of accountability when the next woman, chances are, is going to have the same lack of accountability? Which is why personal accountability from a woman sets you apart. Because whether you believe it or not, the experience of a lot of men, not all, but a lot of men, is this is not a common trait that women have, the taking of accountability, all right? So to do that as a woman, to be able to, again, have that level of emotional intelligence that allows you to take things in and process and understand and be able to accept the constructive criticism and, and recognize where you fall short and not internalize it to where you're beating yourself up or you're letting it weigh on you and letting it affect your confidence or self-esteem, but viewing it as an opportunity for growth, viewing it as an opportunity of how I can now show up better, not just in my relationship, in my life in general, okay? That is a very, very powerful thing. And so I also mentioned being fair because in not taking accountability, there's a lot of unfairness that goes around. There's a lot of, you'll see situations, I've seen it a lot of times in, in marriages where you may have a woman, I'll just give an example. I've seen situations where the husband wants to buy something that he, he likes and the woman is like, oh, we ain't got money for that. Oh, like she's a stickler. She's not having it. So he can't get what he likes. There's too much money. But then when it's stuff that she likes, somehow we got the money. <laughs> so, somehow we're able to make it happen. Somehow you don't have that same resistance you had when it was my thing. 
And a lot of, and, and to that woman, it might be, oh, well, because my, what I want to get makes sense. And what, what you want to get don't make any sense. That's how some will rationalize it. That's unfair. Because again, just because it's not valuable to you, doesn't mean it should not be valuable to him. If it's valuable to him, and trust and believe, he may view your stuff that you wanted as not that valuable either. But he's willing to like, okay, I want my wife to be happy. She's going, she wants to get this thing. We can afford it. Let's go ahead. But you're not giving him that same courtesy. All right. Or that woman isn't given that same courtesy. And that's just one example of being unfair. All right. And so it's 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 important for a woman to be mindful of being accountable and being fair in her relationship. And this will indeed set you apart from other women. Now, here's the message I need you to understand. Though I'm giving you traits that will set you apart, first and foremost, I want you to be you. I want you to be yourself because authenticity will set you apart in itself. Being, knowing yourself and being true to that and being confident in that, that in itself can also set you apart. So I don't want you being something you're not in order to get a man's attention or in, in any of these things. However, I need you to understand the difference between who you are and who you have allowed yourself to be, but still need growth in those areas. Okay. Quick example. I, I've had some women say to me, um, you know, I just speak harshly. That's just who I am. Right. And it's like, no, no, no. Speaking harshly, being mean, being sharp tongued. It's not who you are. That's who you allowed yourself to be. And we can go into all the reasons why you allow yourself to be that, but that's not truly you because that is an area that can improve. That is an area we can fix. Now, here's the difference between something that is who you are that you should not just change. Let's say you're a woman, and I don't know why this comes to me as an example, but you love the outdoors. You love nature. All right. So you like taking nature trips and hikes and all this stuff. That's just you. That's not something to improve or correct or needs to change. That speaks to who you are as a woman. So be that because there will be a man who aligns with that or at least respects that in a way that it can create alignment where and you won't have to compromise self and undermine what makes you happy and what speaks to your heart. So be you but recognize the parts of who you allowed yourself to be that still need to be improved upon. But yes, understand that everything I mentioned in this video will definitely help set you apart from other women and prayerfully will set you up to receive the man who is truly best for you. Thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on the seven things men notice first in a woman. But listen, I think if, if you desire a relationship in any way, and even if right now you may not be in the mindset of, I want one at the moment,